I want to read from uh, the Acts of the Apostles, actually we should be really calling it the Acts of the Holy Spirit, and chapter 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, uh, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. Being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. Uh, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And here we are in the land of Oz, and we still have the power to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this message is so unique, it's setting forth the Lord Jesus Christ, the only saviour for us poor sinners. You see, when we're born into this world, we're born as sinners. That means we've done things wrong in the sight of the Lord. We've broken the commandments of the Lord, and therefore we're heading down to hell as a result of that. But God does not want to have to punish us for all of eternity in the lake of fine brimstone where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. He wants us to be in heaven. And so that's why we as gospel preachers come out here and offer the, the message of salvation unto you, that you might be saved that you might come to faith in Jesus Christ and therefore become a child of God. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And when he had spoken these things, while he beheld, they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. So here's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's been crucified and he shed his precious blood, my friend, for you and for me, because of our sins our sins that are taking us down to hell and God does not want us to go down to hell and God does not want to have to punish us but he will if we die without Jesus Christ as our saviour because he'll be our judge but now the Lord Jesus Christ is taken up from them back into heaven where he came from you see the Lord Jesus Christ did not begin to exist when he was born of Mary that's wrong He's the eternal self-existent one, the eternal God. And you see, he was made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And so a cloud received him out of their sight, out of the disciples' sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood uh, by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, uh, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem uh, from the mount called Olivet, or the Mount of Olives, which is from Jerusalem a uh, Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of uh, names together were about 120, men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled 
which the Holy Spirit by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Remember, Judas Iscariot was the betrayer. He betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ with a kiss, believe it or not. What a con man, you know, a kiss, betraying the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, whomsoever I shall kiss, he it is, take him and let it lead him away. And so, um, for he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field, a field with the reward of iniquity and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst and all his bowels gushed out. See, what happened is um, Judas Iscariot actually committed suicide. He hung himself and his bowels gushed out. What a terrible end for a man who'd been walking with the Lord Jesus Christ those at least three and a half years, at least, and knowing, seeing all his miracles and all the wonderful works which he did, raising the dead and all those other things, healing people, and uh, obviously giving people salvation, you see, salvation is in a person. It's not in a man-made religion. It's in a person. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have the Son of God? Have you believed on him for your eternal salvation? And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue, a seldomer, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of the Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein. And his bishopric let another take. Wherefore, of these uh, men which have com uh, accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John, unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed to uh, Joseph called uh, Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Lord, uh, oh, oh and they, sorry, and they prayed and said, Thou Lord, which knoweth the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. So this man, uh, Matthias, took part uh, uh, in the ministry of the other eleven apostles. Uh, you see, Judas Iscariot had committed suicide because he was an unbeliever. He wasn't a child of God. And so he never had received the Lord Jesus Christ whatsoever as his saviour. It wasn't that he lost his salvation. No one can ever lose their salvation, my friend. This is what we need to understand. Salvation is eternal. If you become a child of God, it'll be forever. Eternal life. That's what it is. Everlasting life. And so you and I need to understand that when we're born into this world, we're born as sinners heading down to hell because of our sins, but God does not want that. And so he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to die upon the cross and be crucified for you and for me. Moving on now to Acts chapter 2. And when the day of the Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues. In other words, other languages have never learned them. That's what tongues is. It's speaking another language having never ever learnt it. It's a supernatural gift from God in these days uh, in which this took place as the Spirit gave them utterance and they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews devout men out of every nation under heaven and when the, uh, this was noised abroad the whole the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language 
And they were all amazed and marvelled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue? In other words, own language, our own dialect wherein we were born. Uh, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of, in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and in Pontus uh, and Asia, Pergia and Pamphylia, in Egypt and in the parts of Libya, uh, about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues or our dialects or languages the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. In other words, these blokes are drunk. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of uh, Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. In other words, it's too early to be drunk. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants uh, and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and, vapors of, and vapor of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Did you hear that? Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that can be you this afternoon. If you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll become a child of God, my friend. This is what God wants for each and every one of us. God does not want us to go down to hell. He wants us to be in heaven. And the only way we can be in heaven is through the finished work and the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and our right response to that. You see, you can just walk past or drive past and say, I don't care, she'll be right, mate, it's all good, whatever you like to say. But it won't be good and it won't be right, mate, because you are heading down to hell without Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you this afternoon that need not be the case. You can trust Christ this afternoon. What you need to do is put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to come in repentance toward God, that is, a, a change of mind, and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and then your soul will be saved. This is the promise of God to all that will call upon the name of the Lord. They will be saved. Uh, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer or permit thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, 
that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ is absolutely essential if you want to be in heaven. If you want to be in heaven, if you want to have forgiveness for your sins, everlasting life, peace with God, you'll have to come God's way. And God's way is through the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one who wants to save your soul this afternoon, my friend. If you come to Christ, your soul will be saved. If you believe on him. So what do you need to do? You need to come in repentance toward God. That is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you're a sinner. And then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And your soul will be saved. This would be the best day of your entire life if you were to come to Christ this afternoon, believe on him, receive him as your saviour, and then your soul will be saved. You'll be in heaven because of the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross when he was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Yes, he shed his precious blood on the cross that you and I might be saved, that our sins could be washed away in that precious blood. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And the Lord is calling you this afternoon, my friend, to come in repentance toward God, as I've said. That's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. I wonder, what will you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? Will he be your saviour, or will he have to be your judge? And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptised. In other words, they were saved. They became children of God. You see, the Bible says, We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So you've got to put your faith in Christ to become a child of God. And no, we're not all God's children until we've been born again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Then they that gladly received his word were baptised. This is the first step of obedience for a child of God. It's got nothing to do with salvation. It's got everything to do with obedience to our new Lord, our new Master. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostle doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. This is communism, it's not communism. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing uh, daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat or food with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favour with all the people. 
And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And my prayer to the Lord is... My prayer to the Lord is this afternoon that you will be saved, that you'll come to faith in Christ, that you would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ so that your soul can be saved. I wonder what will you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ. It'll either be your saviour or it'll have to be your judge. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening.